the challenge of the Yukon. On King! On you, Husky! The underdog king, swiftest and strongest of Eskimo lead dogs, blazes the trail through storm and snow for Sergeant Preston as he meets the challenge of the Yukon. Sergeant Preston was typical of the small band of Northwest Mounted Police who preserve law and order in the new Northwest country, where the greed for wealth and power led to frequent violence and bloodshed. But in spite of the odds against them, Sergeant Preston and his wonder dog king met that challenge, and justice ruled triumphant. At the headquarters of the Northwest Mounted Police, Inspector Grayson looked approvingly at the two officers reporting to him. Corporal Nelson, either you or Sergeant Preston alone could touch a tail, but we're sure that he's headed back to his Eskimo tribe in the Arctic. That particular tribe is a bad one. In fact, they're the only ones who have given us any trouble. They're up near the town of McPherson, aren't they? Yes, they're the ones. Tegu is a half-breed, but he was raised with him. He's cunning, ruthless. This last murder was the boldest of them all. Well, I've always wanted to go up to the Arctic. I'm glad you're giving me this chance, Inspector. <laughs> well, Corporal, Sergeant Preston will tell you it's no pleasure, Jaunt. He's done it before. That's one reason I want him to go with you. Uh, Inspector, do you think Tago's people might try to protect him? They may. We have no way of telling. Most of the Eskimos respect the police. But to keep that respect, we must show them that even the Arctic is no refuge after they've committed murder. We'll do our best, sir. Fine. That's all it will take. <laughs> Tago, the half-breed, raised his head cautiously over some rocks that topped a small hill and a great icy plain that stretched before him. His cruel mouth twisted into a grin as he watched the drama below. He saw two Eskimos, one behind the other, stalking a herd of caribou. Suddenly, the one in the rear raised his gun, fired. The hunter in front pitched forward into the snow. As the murderer bent over his victim, Tago came up softly behind him. Put your hands up. Who? Oh. Kolak. It's you. Tago. What? What you do here? Right now, I see my half-brother kill a man. Tago. You. You not tell. Who is he? Manic. Why you kill him? Me want his wife. What you tell people in village? Me say, him get in way when I shoot caribou. No, Kolak. You shoot too straight. Nobody believe. Why you come here? Me come to see you and my people. Me not want to stay in white man's country. Hmm. Maybe white man not like you. Kolak, you kill a man. I have seen. Maybe now you do as Tego says. Kolak can kill again. Better Kolak and Tego work together. We say Manic fall through ice. I tell story same. Come, we bury him and go back to village. Back in the Eskimo village, Kolak and Tego were telling of the death of Manic. Manic's wife, a young Eskimo girl, listened tearfully as she sat beside her father, who was head of the tribe. When Manak leaned over to spear fish, he slept, go and hole. That is all. Tego will tell you. Tego, you see this? Mm hmm. Me meet Kolak and Manak. Go with them to fish. Manak fall in hole. We try save him, but him not come up. Maybe that is lie. Maybe Manak not sleep. Ula, you go out. Maybe now. Ula will be wife of Kolak. No. No. Kolak, be still. Kolak must wait. Tego, you stay with tribe now. Yes. Tego, stay with me, my igloo. Uh, Tego, good hunter. Strong, big. Maybe Tego make good son-in-law. Learn plenty in white man's country. Maybe. Come, Tego. We go. Yes, Kolak. You 
not take Ula for wife, for mine. Ula, best woman in village. Maybe strongest man get her. Kola can't kill again. Maybe Kola better do like Tego says. Tego know where body of manic lies. Sergeant Preston and Corporal Wilson were nearing their goal in the Arctic wilderness and had stopped to hunt caribou to replenish their meat supply. Oh, I haven't seen any game. Looks rather hopeless, Sergeant. It's getting dark. What is it, boy? Oh, maybe there's something over this ridge. The wind's coming this way and King sent something. Let's have a look. Keep behind those rocks at the top. Look, wolves. Three of them. They're digging and tearing at something. Well, that looks like a man. It is. It's the body of a man. Wait, I'll take a shot at those devils. You got him, Preston. Look at the other two rocks. Come on, Nelson, hurry. He's coming. I guess we came just in time. There wouldn't have been anything left of him. Looks as if they dug him up. Uh, looks pretty bad. They didn't waste any time. Quiet, King. It's an Eskimo. Those beasts saw his parka hood right off. Oh, look, Nelson. Look at his head. This man's been murdered. Murdered? He's been shot through the skull from behind. Through the passing days, Kolak knew that Ola's father favored Tago. And one thought burned in Kolak's mind. Tago must die. It was early morning and the darkness had not yet lifted. Tago. Tago. Come, get up. We go to Bear Trap today. Oh, hey, Kolak. We go to Bear Trap after it get light. Better if we go now before others are up. We kill Bear alone. We big hunters. Others come, they say they kill it. Maybe bear not in trap today. Yesterday me see big polar bear near trap. Come, hurry. All right, Kola, me come. The Eskimo bear trap was an oblong pit, eight feet deep dug into the solid ice. Its walls, slanting downward, widened at the bottom and nothing once in it could scale them to reach the smaller opening. Wide, slippery grooves baited with seal meat led into the narrow man-made chasm. Tago led the way to it cautiously. Can't hear noise, but seal meat is gone. Bear is there, be sure. Uh, there is no bear in here. What you in mean? You go. <laughs> now maybe Tago catch bear when it comes. Oh, cool. <laughs> you take over. I have no Get me out. Me bait trap for bear. Bear fall in it. Nothing left of you to tell. (laughs) Daylight was breaking, and Sergeant Preston and Corporal Nelson were within a few miles of the Eskimo village when they saw an Eskimo coming toward them. As they drew closer, they saw it was a woman carrying a pack. Hello, King! Hello, Huskies! Hello. Hello. Maybe you can tell us if we're going in the right direction. Is there an Eskimo village this way? Yes. Me come from there. Is there a man in the village called Tago? Tago? Who are you? Why you want uh, to... You'd better tell us the truth with the police. Police? You want Tago? Do you know anything about him? Me, Ula, wife of Manek. No like Tago. Him bad. Me run away. You mean you're running away from the village? Why? No want marry Tago. My father say must do. But I thought you said you were the wife of Manic. Manic dead. Me think Kolak and Tago kill him. I wonder if the man we found was Manic. You found him? Where? Uh, we'll take care of that later, Ula. You come back to the village with us and show us where Tago is. I'll promise you, you won't have to marry him. Him not there now. When me start from village, me see him and Kolak go hunt. Them not see me. Did you notice which direction they took from the village? They go toward northern lights. If we could follow them without appearing at the village at all, it might be simpler to catch him. What do you think, Nelson? He seems to be friendly with this girl's father. We might bump into trouble if he gets back there. Mm. Ula, you come with us. We'll circle the village to the north and try and pick up their trail. 
It was luck meeting you like this. Me do. If not have to marry Tago or Cola. I'll promise you that. All right, let's go. On King, on your husky. Preston, don't you think we'd better head for that ridge to the right? We can see straight ahead for miles. There's nothing there. We better trust King and not try any shortcuts. He'll know it if they've turned off. I'm wondering if we should have kept that Eskimo girl with us. She might tell the people in the village. She'd have slowed us down too much. She won't tell. She's too afraid. What's the matter, boy? Oh, your husband. Why are you stopping? King barks, and I thought I heard something. No, there's nothing in sight. I don't see... Hear that, Nelson? Yes. But where is he? There's no sign of him. Now, King seems to know. Come on. Looking down a hole or something. Help! Help me out of here! We'll get you out. Wait a minute. Help me with this rope, Nelson. Okay. Here you are. Catch hold of this. All right, Nelson. Heave. Let's go. No, a little harder. Uh, Easy. There he comes. Hang on, Nelson. I'll grab his arm. There you are. Uh, Kolak, push me in the bear trap. Me see him murder Manic. So him try kill me. Kolak, who's he? Go! Well, Nelson, down behind the sled. Here, King, down. Where'd that shot come from? I... He's dead. They're coming from that ridge. Keep down. That fellow can shoot. He shot this man right through the head. He's up on that ridge. Yeah, there he goes. Maybe I can get him. He's disappeared. Maybe you hit him. It's probably a trick. It'd be foolish to expose ourselves. You pick us off like sitting ducks in the snow. You mean we, we just stay here? This daylight doesn't last long this time of year. Yeah, but if we can't see He'll him, He'll figure I... we can't trail him in the dark. He thinks his biggest danger is two men. He won't be counting on the thing that's going to mean his capture. Yes, fella, that's you. Kolak, too, had waited until darkness made it safe to move. King got the strong scent of him in a spot behind the rocks where he had hidden. The dog stopped, circled, and led them back through a narrow opening into an icy bypass. The northern lights were reflected dimly. Find him, boy. Now look, a dark opening, like a cave. King, quiet, boy. Come here. Kolak must have crawled in there on hands and knees. Yeah, no one could have found him here. I don't see how we can get him out. There's only one way. Send King in after him. He might shoot. You're taking a chance. He doesn't expect us tonight. No human could have followed him. All right, King. After him, boy. Get him. Help! 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 Oh, help me! Help me! Oh, take him away! Oh, Hold him, King! Watch him, boy! All right, Kolak. Come out quietly or I'll tell the dog to kill you. Please, Kolak! Please, help! Help! You come out first. Let the dog follow you. All right, King. Let him go. Yeah, he got him. All right, Kolak, stand up. Uh, hand. Oh, my, my hand. You just weren't fast enough with your knife. You shouldn't have tried using it on King. You're under arrest for murder. Well, he isn't the one we came after, uh, but... I'm uh... sure Inspector Grayson will accept him as a substitute. Good work, fella. You've done a fine job tonight. <laughs> These copyrighted dramas originate in the studios of WXYZ Detroit, and all characters, names, places, and incidents used are fictitious. They are sent to you each week at the same time and reach you from our transcription studios. Hal Neal speaking. This is the Michigan Radio Network.